This is a female driver who graduated from a driving school in China, and it's a mystery how she got her driver's license. Of course, in China, as long as you have the right connections and bribe the examiner, getting a driver's license can be very easy. However, some people are unfortunate. They've just paid their tuition fees and haven't even touched the steering wheel when the driving school suddenly faces a financial crisis and the owner absconds. I hadn't even touched the steering wheel when the driving school went bust. Several students who had paid but had not yet started their training reported to the media that it is now impossible to schedule driving lessons or tests with Horpless Drive, and refunds are not forthcoming. In response, these helpless individuals have been asking redress from the relevant government departments. Quote, first and foremost, every person should keep evidence of their payments to the driving school. The reason being that even if you sign many documents tonight, you will need to provide valid proof when it comes to getting a refund or compensation. Any form of evidence, whether electronic or paper receipts, should be preserved as long as possible. It's critical to have proof of your payments to the driving school. According to mainland media reports, as of October 17th, Horpless headquarters and various training venues have been closed, and attempts to contact the company's legal representative by phone have been unsuccessful, leaving a large number of students unable to continue their driving practice. These students have formed multiple WeChat groups for rights protection, with at least 2,000 people and many more are unaware of the school's status. An incomplete count by students reveals that the total tuition fees involved exceed 3 million yuan. A coach from the driving school claimed that the number of students exceeds 20,000. The school announced on its official WeChat account on the evening of October 19th that it would guarantee a return to normal training at all venues within two working days. However, on October 23rd, another notice titled, quote, Emergency Transitional Arrangements for Hopeless Drive Students was published, proposing transitional refunds for students. Internal staff expressed skepticism about this notice, citing the company's lack of funds and uncertainty regarding the success of the refunds. Ms. Chen from Guangzhou told the media that she signed up in April this year for Hopeless's most expensive driving package. Priced at a discounted 5,180 yuan, after a recommendation from a colleague and positive online reviews. The package included all training and examination fees. After passing the first theoretical exam, she trained at the Horpless Drive's Guangzhou Tower branch for two months, but was unable to lock her driving hours. Customer service had previously stated that the backlog was due to an excessive number of students. The drive school had initially promised to transfer her driving registration to Zhao Qing and back to Guangdong after her exam. Chen later discovered that her registration had been mysteriously transferred to an obscure driving school in Yunfu, Guangdong. Later, she could no longer track her personal registration through the school's mini-program. Another student, Miss Wong, revealed to the media that she had just paid her fees when she heard about the driving school's financial trouble. On October 11th, she inquired about registration at Horplus Training Grounds and paid 4,480 yuan for an, quote, all-inclusive package through online shopping platform Taobao. Mr. Pan from Haiju had an even more tumultuous experience. He said, quote, in 2020, I signed up for YY Drive School, but it closed down. This year, I switched to Horpless Drive only to face another shutdown. When YY shut down, he had not yet completed his first subject and his refund is still pending. Later, he found a private instructor at Haiju District where he practiced his second subject. However, he later realized that his instructor had not logged the required hours for him. After seeing a post about Horpless Drive on social media in July, he did some research and visited their headquarters before signing a contract, only to be disappointed once more. Mr. Pan said, I've spent 8,000 to 9,000 yuan over the past three years and I haven't even taken the third subject exam yet. He now considers transferring to a new driving school to continue his turbulent drive journey.
In the driving school industry fraught with deceptive practices, the greatest victims appear to be the students who have paid for driving lessons, as they face the double whammy of not being able to get refunds and suffering delays in their training progress. According to Ms. Lee, a student at the school, since October 17th, customer service has ceased to respond to messages beyond their scripted replies. The training ground at Jiahe Wanggang, where she practiced, was one of the better ones, with instructors remaining on duty until the facility was closed on October 23rd, allowing for normal booking and practice sessions. However, some locations experienced severe disruptions, including mass instructor strikes that prevented students from practicing, as well as forced closures of training grounds due to expired leases. Students from China have revealed the challenging nature of obtaining a driver's license in the country. Not only are they required to enroll in driving school programs and pay steep fees, but they are also faced with numerous unscrupulous practices within the driving schools themselves. These practices include coaxing students to spend more on VIP services, arbitrarily raising prices, coaches imposing additional charges under various pretexts and driving schools tacitly allowing these irregular fees. In some cases, even the vice principals of driving schools openly endorse such illicit fee collections. You know about under-the-table money, right? In the driving school business, it's pretty much common to pocket some extra cash. Some instructors rake in tens of thousands a month. Once you're the main instructor, I can't promise you tens of thousands every month, but 15,000 to 20,000 is definitely doable for everyone. We have folks here making 20,000, 30,000, even 40,000. Let me give it to you straight. If you're in it for the money, you might find yourself teaching students even at midnight. Get ready to work overtime. You charge 150 yuan for an hour. You understand? Then you'll have money rolling in every day. My name is Hu, and I'm in charge of this campus. Being a driving instructor is, in my opinion, the most controllable job. Whoever gets in your car has to listen to you. On paper, instructors make a decent salary, but off the books, there's a whole lot more going on. You need to learn the ropes, both officially and unofficially. Some driving schools, in an outright declaration of disregard for ethics, have declared they lack instructors with a conscience. Think of your students as your personal money trees. Keep them happy and they'll keep paying you. Once you've, quote, sheared the sheep, let them, quote, grow their wool back and then shear them again. Are there any instructors with a conscience? Not at our driving school. It used to be no problem making 30,000 to 50,000 a month. And some could easily pull in over 100,000. If a student is doing well, mess with their confidence. If they're not, ask them how they expect to pass like that. Then you get them to pay for extra lessons. You gotta make them think you're a great teacher, but if they can't pass, it's their own problem. For Chinese students, the initial enrollment fee of several thousand yuan is just the beginning of the expenses. Throughout the training process, additional outlays crop up, including exam fees for the four required tests, retest fees for those who fail, and extra coaching fees for practice sessions. These are considered standard charges. However, the industry is also rife with opaque and irregular income from practices such as bribing instructors for special attention, paying extra for instructor services, fuel and air conditioning fees for instructor vehicles, and bribes to examiners to pass tests. Reluctant students must put up with things and pay if they wish to succeed. Sasha 在里面的,看看看,外皮到我不,呃,成立的没得出来了,叫什么,外皮啊。我不只给他多少钱。你是叫几个? 呃,四百多。How much do you charge for air conditioning? Over 300, and it's a total rip-off. 
That umbrella on the roof and the fan inside the car, the instructor charges 88 yuan per person. And for air conditioning, they say it's 6 or 700 per person. As soon as someone gets in the car, they start with a 200 yuan charge for fuel. My kids said they had no money and didn't pay, but then the next day they were asked for another 300 for air conditioning. It's always about money. Instructors, their whole aim is to take your money. You're an instructor too, so let's keep this between us. If you don't pay for VIP, they won't schedule your practice sessions. Whenever you try to schedule, I'll just tell you I'm busy recruiting. Furthermore, some instructors take advantage of this situation to manipulate and harass female students psychologically and sexually. This old instructor once said to an 18-year-old girl, quote, You didn't pass, right? You failed your last test, huh? The girl admitted it and the instructor said, quote, Last time, the instructor wanted to touch your hand, touch your leg, and you wouldn't let him. What about this time? The girl stayed silent, her face turning bright red, and he just went ahead and touched her. Taking the third subject test, you pay 200 for a simulation fee and an 800 yuan red envelope. It's disgusting. It's just so corrupt and dark. Driving schools do not only engage in underhanded money-making schemes on their own. They also collude with governmental transport departments in charge of exams to exploit students further. Through bribery, these departments can manipulate the pass rates, compelling students to pay for additional training sessions. As a result, obtaining a driver's license in China may hinge more on financial and luck factors than on skill and knowledge. Additionally, China's 996 work culture, working 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week, makes it exceedingly difficult for workers to take time off for driving lessons. Exacerbating the challenge of securing a license amidst the turmoil of driving schools going bust. In the recent Horpless Drive incident, the victims include not only the students who paid for their lessons, but also the driving school instructors and sales staff. Complaints about refunds from students have gone unaddressed and instructors and salespeople have had their wages withheld. An employee from Horpless Drive revealed to the media that the driving school, once boasting eight locations, has completely ceased operations. The number of instructors reached several dozens with staff numbers nearing 100 at its peak. Corpless Drive insiders were not surprised by the company's collapse given the warning signs regarding its financial health. Instructor Wang from Guangzhou Tower campus of Horplus, who joined Horplus in 2020, told the media that many instructors had been unpaid for months. He said, quote, The company stopped paying salaries for March, and now we can only turn to labor arbitration without a resolution in sight. Since March 2022, the company stopped contributing to his social security and from April this year, salary stopped altogether. Quote, each coach's situation is different, but they owe me a significant amount, totaling 100,000 yuan for half a year, he said. Another salesperson from within the driving school previously disclosed to the media their plight as victims with several months' salary spending, amounting to about 30,000 yuan still unpaid. Before the crisis at Horplus Drive became apparent, there were online rumors suggesting that Horplus's predecessor was the defunct and liquidated Zhu Jianqiang Driving School. It was alleged that the related shareholders in a bid to fraudulently acquire funds had re-registered and made a comeback with Horplus Drive. In response to these allegations on March 28th this year, Horpless Drive asserted its legitimacy as a lawfully operated and licensed driving school, disclaiming any connection with Zhu Jianchang. However, corporate information from Tianyan Cha revealed that Horpless Drive's actual controller, Setu Jiapei, is associated with 11 companies, including the Zhuhai Zhu Jianchang No. 3 Investment Center. Additionally, the company's partner, Li Qiji, serves as the supervisor for Horplus Intelligent Driving. 
Following the explosive revelation, official news outlets reported multiple warnings from the local transport department regarding Horpla's recruitment as being, quote, seriously abnormal. In May of this year, the Guangzhou Municipal Transportation Department published a list highlighting discrepancies in the quality of motor vehicle driver training services for April 2023. Notably, Horpless Intelligent Driving Guangzhou Technology Co. Ltd. featured on this list for serious abnormalities in the volume of tuition custodial accounts relative to daily recruitments. Subsequently, Horpless has repeatedly appeared on lists of training institutions in Guangzhou with abnormal custodial accounts. In light of this, the Guangzhou Municipal Transportation Department issued reminders to be vigilant about the financial security of driving school funds associated with these abnormal training institutions. Some netizens have been skeptical about these warnings, questioning why the transport department, if it recognized serious operational issues with the driving school, did not regulate or investigate, instead of deflecting the incident's emergence onto the students and blaming their naivety. Speculations arose amongst netizens that, quote, in China, the transport department acts as a supervisor over driving schools. Given the frequency of Chinese-style bribery, they probably have connections. Therefore, they just give out warnings but do not engage in actual regulation. Recently, as reported by netizens, this driving school continues to recruit online and consumers who haven't seen the news of the financial implosion are still flooding in to register. Beyond Horplus, excluding previously collapsed institutions like YY, Zhu Jianchang, and Shangde Driving Schools, several others in Guangzhou, such as Zhu Hai Nanfei, Yue Lian, Cheng Tong, and Junfeng Driving Schools are all part of a widespread closure wave. The small-scale school closures are not even accounted for, with the wave of shutdowns in China's driving schools continuing to spread. The mass closure of driving schools in China is attributable to several reasons. The predominant one is the business model of driving schools coupled with legal loopholes in the operation of driving schools across various regions in China, as well as economic debilitation caused by the pandemic over the past few years. The business model is based on prepayment, where students pay up front and the funds go directly into the accounts of the driving schools and their private owners. The cost of practical driving lessons and examinations is then distributed across several stages. Schools with high enrollment rates are the most vulnerable to collapse. It is no exaggeration to say that in a month they can recruit thousands or even tens of thousands of students. Taking 1,000 students as an example, with some paying half and others the full amount, and calculating a fee of 4,000 yuan per student, the cash flow can reach up to 4 million yuan in a month. This explains why many driving schools set monthly recruitment targets for instructors. Expansion happens rapidly for those with high recruitment numbers, with the addition of a new practice field and over 10 instructor vehicles being common monthly occurrences. However, this essentially spends students' fees in advance. When policy changes or a pandemic hits and there are no funds left for continued operation, financial chains break, leading to inevitable closures and leaving behind numerous students who have not completed their courses. Thus, many believe it is unrealistic to expect a refund after a school closes. Three years ago, the tuition fees from Zhu Jianchang Driving School were never reclaimed. They had been completely spent, and even if the owner was imprisoned, it would be impossible to refund such a large sum to consumers. In China, the driving school industry is a fertile ground for fundraising within the law, where a limited liability company can be established with minimal registered capital. Once the company goes bankrupt, it only declares insolvency up to the amount of the registered capital, which is the limit of its compensation responsibility. For instance, if a company with a registered capital of 1 million yuan goes bankrupt, it is only required to compensate that 1 million yuan. And any illicit income acquired during operation is not subject to recollection. 
The rise of the internet has given birth to a cohort of young companies that enjoy playing with cash flow. They squander and invest as they please, but when they collapse, they leave nothing behind but debts and a hollow shell. These are not isolated cases, but rather frequent occurrences in the contemporary Chinese corporate landscape. The collective collapse of driving schools in China is hardly surprising, as the Chinese economy has long been teetering on the brink of critical thresholds. On May 25th, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang, addressing an economic summit of 100,000 attendees, explicitly warned that the Chinese economy is at risk of slipping out of its reasonable operational range. He demanded that the local authorities ensue positive growth for the second quarter. The current figures just barely meet the threshold, yet they are still approximately 0.4% to 0.8% lower than the market expectations surveyed by media outlets such as Tsai Xin and Reuters from domestic and international institutions and economists. Moreover, this year's first half GDP growth rate did not even reach half of the expected target. The common sentiment among businesses this year is that, quote, money is too hard to earn. According to incomplete statistics by Elam Business, at least 4,181 brick-and-mortar retail stores failed to survive the first half of 2023, succumbing to the wave of closures. Coupled with the downturn in foreign trade, the collapse of the real estate sector as significant unemployment surge and three years of depletion due to the pandemic, the Chinese economy is stretched to its limits. The emergence of a wave of industry-wide closures is therefore not shocking. It can be said that what we see of China today is merely an illusory bubble constructed by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, through manipulated data. To summarize with the words of economic commentator Tang Jingyuan, quote, The Chinese economy is riddled with problems. The CCP is merely employing tactics to delay the inevitable crisis, which cannot be sustained in the long run.